Hello, my name is David Radford. I am the planning archaeologist at Oxford City Council and this is a short film about an archaeological excavation that took place in Paradise Street in 2018. So it's early March and I'm on Paradise Street. I'm just about to go and have a look at an excavation that's taking place at the Cooper Keller site, which is just over here behind me. So the Cooper Keller site is of interest because it sits on an island formed by the back stream behind me and the Castle Mill stream uh, to, to the east. If you look at aerial photographs of Oxford, you can see a distinctive oval shape to the west of the town formed by the stream channels of the Thames River. The eastern part of the oval is formed by the Castle Mill stream and it's possible that this is a man-made channel created in the late Saxon period. The castle at Oxford was established in 1071 by the Norman knight Robert de Oily. However, it's possible that St George's Tower, um, which can be seen in the castle precinct, may predate this foundation and it's believed that Earl Alfgar held a mill, perhaps at the castle, in the middle of the 11th century. So we don't really know the nature of any compound that may have preceded the creation of the Norman castle in the western part of the town. We don't know the exact date of the foundation of the castle mill, and we don't know for sure whether the, the stream channel, the castle mill stream, was created in the late Saxon period. All these things can only really be further clarified by archaeological investigation. The island on which the Cooper Callis site sits is known as the Wareham Bank, and it's possible that in the late Saxon period there was an actual bank here retaining the waters of the Castle Mill stream. This is the approximate location of the Cooper Callis site, with the Castle Mill stream to the left and the castle beyond and to the right, the back stream. Uh, it sits within the suburb of St. Thomas, which runs up to the church of St. Thomas the Martyr to the far right. And the various islands formed by the stream channels of the Thames, collectively known as Osney Island. The name Osney first appears in documents in 1004, and it may be that this simply reflects a local person's name and simply means Oza's Island. Properties are mentioned in this area in the Doomsday Book and an estate centred on Osney Island is suggested in the will of Archbishop Alfric at the start of the 11th century. The area has been well studied archaeologically but there's no evidence to date to suggest any significant activity before the 12th century. The growth of the suburb was spurred on by the creation of an Augustinian priory to the west in the 1120s becoming Osney Abbey in the 1150s but the dissolution of the abbey in the 16th century led to the fortunes of the suburb declining somewhat. One trade that is known to have been practiced in the suburb is brewing, certainly by the post-medieval period. By the early 18th century, the Swan's Nest Brewery had been established on the Wareham Bank. This subsequently became known as the Swan Brewery and was later taken over by the family firm Hawes. This picture shows the demolition of the old Swan Brewery chimney in the 1960s, at which point the Cooper Callas building was constructed. So here we're looking across the excavation site in March. You can see the old pile foundations of the Cooper Callas warehouse. The excavation uh, seems to have revealed the layout of the 19th century brewery. So a series of buildings comprising limestone walls, areas of discrete burning, uh, areas of cobbled surfaces and brick uh, yards, including this brick edging, which may be for a cartway. Uh, we have various finds on the site reflecting what has been produced, um, along with other materials such as clay pipe. Oxford Archaeology, who are undertaking the work, are slowly clearing back to construction levels, revealing the plan of the northern part of the brewery. This can then be added to the results of the 2005 excavation by John Moore, 
Heritage Services directly to the south of this site at the former Telecom House uh, site and together they should help us produce the ground plan of the northern part of the brewery. This can then be related to the various plans we have for the site. It seems likely that if there was an earlier 18th century brewery, this was located further south along the Wareham Bank, closer to the original Swan's Nest on the edge of the southern tip of the island, which gave the brewery its name. Okay, so it's mid-March and the excavation's gone down as deep as it needs to across much of the site, revealing the remains of the 19th century brewery. But in certain areas where it needs to go deeper for lift shafts, we're getting down to the to waterlogged deposits, revealing waterlogged wood and the first indications of medieval pottery. So we're going to see how that develops and, and revisit in, in a few weeks. So here we are a bit further along in March and Oxford Archaeology have finished the areas of the lip pits and are moving to the central area of the site where they've got to mitigate the impact of a new crane base and an area of denser piles. So the digs coming down onto a sequence of medieval structures. We've got the remains of mortar floors and stone line drains. Here are just a few of the pieces of medieval pottery that have been recovered. So it's the 23rd of March and I'm discussing the final details of a borehole transect to be excavated across the site with Oxford Archaeology. So what we're hoping to do is to establish how the Wareham Bank was formed. Now we know from the 2005 work just to the south that there was dumping of soil onto the bank in the 12th and 13th century. The question is, is that the first point at which this area becomes habitable or is there evidence for earlier dumping, perhaps a formation of a retaining bank to the Castle Mill stream? So the red dots here show the axis of the borehole survey and this is now being completed and the initial results show that we do not have a late Saxon bank of any kind here. What we seem to have is a sequence of uh, river channel deposits, presumably part of the Deventian channel that ran around the base of the gravel terrace, and then medieval dumping. So what we need to do now is undertake uh, scientific dating of the channel deposits to get some sense of how and when the channel developed. Hello, so it's uh, mid-April and the sun's finally out. Uh, the site's had a few problems with water ingress with the wetter weather, but now it's dried out and we're coming down onto a cobbled surface which seems to be medieval in date and it may be an earlier alignment of Paradise Street. So this is a, a theory that the archaeologists on site are investigating and about to go and have a look. So you can see the cobbled surface in front of us with a little drainage channel running off to the right. I'm not quite sure at the moment whether this represents part of Paradise Street or a yard coming off it. It certainly leads towards an area um, which is quite interesting because it's produced evidence for this oven or kiln. You can see the very distinctive uh, orange colouring where there have been intense temperatures. We're getting a series of structures which need to be uh, carefully uh, recorded to try and work out their phasing and sequence. Here we see the large drain that ran one of the medieval buildings across to the back stream. So it's early May and Oxford Archaeology have gone down as deep as they need to at the site. Uh, we can just see the, the pile rig that's starting to put the piles in behind me. I'm just going to go and have a, a final look. So to back up the results of the borehole transect, we've dug a hole down to the reclamation levels and picked up dating which is consistent with 12th, 13th century dumping in this area. 
It's for archaeology. I just finished off the recording of the sequence of medieval structures that have been uncovered in the central part of the site. One quite nice find from the site is this piece of moulded stonework, perhaps from uh, the window of a Norman house. And as Dig winds down, the OA team are finishing their records, uh, having a few celebratory cakes and looking at some of the finds that have been produced, like this medieval token that needs to go back to the office and be cleaned up and analysed. So at the end of the excavation, Oxford Archaeology have put up a poster on St Thomas's Street showing the results. So we have a sequence of at least three medieval buildings, uh, kiln or oven, nice, nice uh, cobbled surfacing and, and a myriad of other finds to analyse. And uh, the team will be going back to the office and slowly working their way to the site records and the finds will go to find specialists and the results ultimately will be collated into a written report which will be publicly accessible through the OASIS website.